Good evening everybody, welcome back. I'm sorry it's been quite a while since my last video. I think it's almost been three months and I apologize for the delay. But um, of course, in September, um, after the very long lockdown break, I finally managed to get back to uh, playing concerts, which was lovely. But at the fifth week, uh, England is back in lockdown. So here I am with free time again to make videos and I promise I'm going to make the most of it. Now, tonight, um, I thought we uh, would go back to uh, tackling a scale and the one I've chosen is on the ABRSN grade 4 syllabus and that is E flat major. Now, I'm mainly going to focus here on the upper octave because that's really where all the challenges are. Um, the lower octave, if you learned back in, I think it is grade two, your um, B flat major uh, scale uh, properly, for which actually there is also a um, video which I made, I'll post the link below, then there should be no problem here for you to, uh, to uh, get to grips with that lower octave. But just as a quick recap, I'll just talk you, um, talk you through it very quickly very very important with a starting note that we don't just sort of fish for the E flat but we prepare our whole hand and especially we want to anchor our fourth finger before we start so we we prepare the whole shape yeah and we also prepare our backwards extension and remember as always with the backwards extension the thumb the second the third and the fourth finger do not move out of their spots they stay where they are yeah and provided you do that preparation well, the first octave should be well taken care of. So one set of really good preparation and you should have the first octave in the bag. Now, as promised, we are going to look in really great detail at the second octave because E flat major is the first scale where you're having to do something very peculiar and that is you're having to shift back by a position in order to go up. And um, that can be a little bit confusing to start with, but it it runs through all the scales you will learn from grade five onwards. So we're going to look at this really closely and I will teach you an absolutely fail-safe method to learn how to do that securely. Okay, so we arrive, our second octave starts on the extended first finger. Now, on our second finger, our second finger is the last finger before the shift. And since the next position, we're going into third position afterwards, does not require the extension, we need to release the extension on the second finger. And I like to really connect the second finger to that release, as if you were flicking a switch. So you're coming up here. And as soon as my second finger comes down, as if I'm flicking a switch, I release the extension. Yeah, really practice it like that every time. Extend backwards. And now, second finger comes down, you release the extension. That's really important because otherwise your shift afterwards will be compromised. Now, let's take a look at the actual shift. As I said, we're going to third position. A few things you want to make sure before you shift. First of all, make sure your fingers are really well aligned. What do I mean by that? Make sure that you don't shift with your third and fourth finger somewhere out here because that will make it very, very, very difficult and you will just, it will be like slipping on a banana skin. You will just go with no, with no control. Yeah, so instead you want to check that before you let go, your fourth finger is above the string and that ensures good alignment. Now, release the pressure on the fingers 
and gently just all the shift is is you release your elbow in order to change the angle so don't force it up instead soften your elbow and just release flat and we are coming to the crux of the matter we are having to shift back by one position in order to get to the final three notes to the C to the G, D and the E flat and uh, with that in mind because as I said it'll come back in all the subsequent scales E major A flat you name it there is a specific technique which I call invisible notes now, whilst we are going up a tone in pitch, what we are actually doing is we are going down a tone in terms of position. I'm sorry if you hear some banging in the background. It was bonfire night two nights ago and some people are a bit late to the party. So here we are. going back by a tone and why do I call them invisible notes because when we're playing for real we can't we can't hear what's happening but when we practice we need to make that invisible note or I should probably not call it invisible note I should probably call it inaudible note so we need to make it audible First of all, practice going back by a tone because that's your shifting distance. So, back by a tone and then across. So the shift is always done on the old string on the old finger. So, so your fourth finger shifts down to A flat you've arrived in your new position and likewise in reverse we're going to go up by a tone to take us into our next position now to start with you want to take a lot of time and make that really audible so play the note properly in between progress you make them shorter and even shorter until you are so secure with the distance you will get it right absolutely every single time so that is a little hint on how to practice so one more time for the second octave you start with the extension as soon as you your second finger comes down you release relax your hand align release your arm for the shift now down by a tone well again shift and then you extend and that's your second octave of E flat major now I hope uh, this has been helpful uh, if uh, if it was which I hope it was uh, please um, do smash that like button uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, I promise it will not be another three months until the next video and I look forward to seeing you then.